Hi, I'm Billy Maddox and I'm gonna mess this up so that you don't have to. Ah, the ever-elusive heat oxidation and all of that. I found this picture online with all the colors that you would need. But look, this isn't a science class or anything like that, but I am gonna show you what temperatures you would need to do steel in or whatever. But anyway, let's get into some plastic. <laughs> And I say elusive because this is kind of easy to do if you have an airbrush, but if you don't, it's kind of hard to do. Okay, so I've done it a couple times in the past, and this was not even on the channel. I did this way before I even started the channel, and I also did this one, which shows a bit of progression, and I think my best so far is the lightsaber build that I did. And I'll show you, uh, this is what I look at as reference when I'm trying to do these. So this one, as you can see, it looks like a paint application. And I've been chasing this dragon of trying to make it look like it is stained into the metal and not in not a paint application. I get a little bit closer a long while later uh, doing this one, and I'll show you exactly how I did this one. And it was using these kind of shiny, shimmery paints. Um, I don't use very expensive uh, acrylic paints. Um, I find that I can get by with these, but you know, I'm brushing this on and I'm using the blues and the purples and these greens and I'm trying to sort of create something that looks random, but you're applying it with a brush so it's always gonna be deliberate. I think I get close, but just not close enough. And I don't have an orange sort of shimmery one. It doesn't exist, why? Because it's cold. And here is where I discovered that Hmm, maybe I should have been blotting this this whole time. And I kind of just cover it because it didn't work. It just looks like orange paint over other paint. Here, I get really, really close to the effect that you get with an airbrush without using an airbrush. And I did it by using blotting. Now, what I did was I put the paint onto a paper towel. Wait, why is my glove broken in this? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that's weird. Um, I did this by applying it to the paper towel and then blotting it on there. It does two things. Uh, it randomizes it because you can't really see exactly where you're putting it on there. And it works as kind of subtly putting it on and taking it off and putting it on you can really kind of build it up this is a weathering step you know so it should have been done like this from the start and then i figured what if i try some gold and it gave me the colors that i needed and what i wanted to achieve which you can achieve with an airbrush um is that the metal, quote unquote metal, looks stained, looks oxidized. I didn't want it to look like paint on top of something. I wanted it to feel like it's coming from the inside. And I got there. I got there with this one. And uh, I'm very proud of that. This kind of shows my progression as a maker, this heat oxidation sort of three tries over a span of many years now. You see, that looks like paint on top of stuff. That is kind of getting close, but it still looks like paint. Now this looks like it's coming from within. This looks like it's stained. Um, so that's how you can do heat oxidation without an airbrush. Hope you learned something. I don't know, leave it in the comments. If you like this video, why don't you like this video? I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Hit that little like thing. It helps me, you know, grow. You want to see me grow? Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Again, thanks so much for watching. Roll the thing!